or their kids, or if you like, household income. So 50% of household income, we're discounting it for startups. So we're left with 100 million people, right? From the next 100 million people, we we'll pick another class, the middle, the, the middle upper and the middle lower, right? Um, this class of people may have some income. They work for small businesses. Some work for government. They have some cash flow. They have the ability to invest, you know, in some kind of portfolios, as the case may be. Um, you know, they can rent houses. They can afford to pay rent. They may struggle, but they could still pay rent. And what kind of product are we going to have for them? You know, what kind of savings product are we going to have for them? What kind of asset product are we going to have for them? By asset product, I mean facility, you know? Are we simply going to give them facility to rent their own homes? Or are they able to buy through some unique models under Islamic finance? Are they, are they, are they able to, to buy gradually? Rent to own, as the case may be, Unfortunately, the lower middle class may even still have that challenge, right? So if you look at this end, yeah, target savings, right? They can be building their target savings over a period of time, you know? Um, we can organize microfinance housing for them. But where is that going to come from? In Nigeria today, you only have 50,000 mortgages, just 50,000. Just 50,000 mortgages, you know, wherever. And it's in the beginning of Nigeria, right? Let's look at the upper middle. The upper middle, Yes, if you have product like real estate not for them, you have to cook, yeah, they can still take part. I mean, they, they, yes, working for government, working for some you know, smaller companies and all of that, they can still take part to a very large extent. Um, and then you have, the, you have those at the top, the, the, the upper lower class, you know, and then you have the upper class. You know? Now for them, yes, you know, they can invest in a lot of such um, product, they can also, create their own unique worlds. But before then, let's look at a couple of other data around this same slide, right? This same slide. Um, so the World Bank tells us, you know, and that was in 2012, that we've got 17 million housing needs. So again, uh, they didn't count the houses in the Morocco, they didn't count the houses in shanty areas, you know, in some villages, they just didn't count them because they feel, hey, human beings can't live there. So they didn't count them, right? So they said, no, no, you need 18, you need, 17 million housing units. And today, a lot of um, analyst sale is actually 20 million now, you know? So what that means is that if, if every year, we need, uh, some have argued, 700 million housing. You know, that's, that's yearly need. Others have argued that, you know what, let's not even follow the World Bank. Let's just keep it simple and real, that everybody can get their own lovely homes, you know, like, like Canada or the UK or the US or even Cote d'Ivoire, you know, or even Rwanda. Now, they can't get their own homes. Let's simply at least create something good enough for them. So they will argue that we need 300 million, 300,000 housing units every year. Now, as we were supposed to build one unit of 5 million naira, we're going to need 1.5 trillion naira. I, I take that again. If we're going to build, um, if we're going to build um, just 300,000 units, you know, at 5 million per unit average, it means that we're going to need 1.5 trillion. We don't have that. The government is not going to put that on the table and nobody's going to put that on the table. You know, the banks, limited capital, a lot of other issues are unable to put that on the table. You know, more so, real estate transactions are too risky. You know, when there are other liquid investments that can place your money in, you know, without any risk, right? So how do we solve this problem? Maybe, maybe not even provide that 300,000. Let's even say realistically, we're looking at 50,000. Let's discount it further. What transactions are we going to put in place in terms of you know, liability and asset? By liability, I mean deposit. And by asset, I mean what you call loans. But let's call it facility, you know, so we can comply with Islamic rules, right? Um, so that's the reality. Well, again, you know, Augustus and Co argue that we're going to need 6.4 trillion you know, um, to meet up this gap. Um, and then so many other issues here and there. And guess what? Mortgages as a percentage of our GDP is about the lowest in the entire world. It's less than 1%, you know? Some analysts argue between 0.5 and 0.7%, that's low. Now, you see, I'm not sad to think that, hey, hey, let's hold on a bit, let's hold on a bit. If the bulk of assets are dead assets, you know, houses just lying fallow, 
uh, you know, we need so much money to build. And our, 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 we have discounted the middle, part of the middle income class and the lower income, we've taken them out, you know, more than 100 million people. How do we then, how do we get affordability? You know, how do we get people to afford the houses that we're going to build? Or how do we get people to invest in portfolios, either in Nigeria or outside Nigeria? But guess what? Remittances, foreign remittances make up 6% of Nigeria's GDP. That's, that's at the bottom there. Remittances make up 6%. Now it grew, you know, by 3.6 billion era. You know, that's 17% growth between 2017 and 2018. So in just a period of about a year, money that was, that was coming in from our family members and cousins and brothers in the UK, the US, and Saudi Arabia and Malaysia, you know, hit 3.6 billion era. A lot of them want houses. A lot of them want houses. And guess what? Um, this figure is going to hit 34 billion by 2023. That's in three years' time. So in three years' time, foreign remittances will hit 34 billion naira. Right? How do we? And guess what? Most of them want houses. Most of them want houses locally. They want to have a family home here. It doesn't have to be some, you know, like, like my father's house with um, seven bedrooms and large compound. No, 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 not at all. Everybody wants something just nice, basic in a lovely place, right? Um, and guess what? Um, if that money hits the country, it's going to make up 83% of our budget. You know, it makes up, so it's a larger percentage of our budget. So foreign remittances is a lot, and that's why We've put them under the upper class, right? Diaspora markets. So the diaspora market is huge. We can build for them and, and expand and expand your, your space, your investment space, either on the asset side or the liability side. Now I'm gonna come back to this slide from time to time. Right? But let, let's move to the next slide um, before we take our first break. Now I'm gonna go a little bit, um, I'll try and be a little bit more technical this time around, you know, uh, but again, I'm gonna avoid Arabic technologies. Now this model you have here is a perfect summary of Islamic finance or non-interest finance or alternative, alternative finance as it relates to real estate, supply side and demand side. Again, I repeat, supply side means construction. Demand side means um, people buying houses, you know, um, mortgages, if you like, or home finance, right? Um, how do we get cash into the supply and demand side? How do we get money into it? And that's one of the major interests of Trust Bank Capital to say, hey, we can create lovely asset classes from real estate. I mentioned earlier on that two thirds of global assets is real estate. Same thing with Nigeria. Two over three. So if you have three assets, two of it are real estate, right? So let's look at this liability. Um, um, what are the contracts under Islamic finance that are applicable, and what are the risk for each of these contracts? On the asset side, the asset side, you know, construction that supply side, um, own finance that demand of mortgage side. What contrast can we use and how risky are they? You know, are we able to identify all of this risk, which again, we're gonna talk about. And I'm sure we're gonna have a lot of questions around this area. I mean, today I've had a lot of calls. People say, hey, but I want to do business with you. You know, I want to do my real estate project somewhere. What do I need to put in place? You know, say again, let's look at the risk. Now on the liability side, there are two major types of funding. Debt fund, debt, this side, the green side, extreme left hand corner, debt funds, they are debt. And there's equity funds. You know, the easiest way to describe equity fund is like capital. Like somebody saying, hey, take capital for 10 years, perpetual, you know, even for five years with the right to buy back, you know, minor buyout. So minor can come and buy us out after five years, no problem but it's patient fund. How do we use equity fund for real estate investments? And where can we find them? Now, debt. The bulk of what we have in Nigeria, either they come in form of intervention fund or 
your 10 deposits or investment accounts, they are debts, debt fund, including interest-free loan, called ASAM. They are debt. So somebody gives me interest-free loan of, of um, 10 million naira. It keeps me in my position as an investor or as a, as a fund arranger, as a fund manager, you know, and then I use money to do some real estate projects, you know, and the thing is supposed to be for one year and it spills over into 18 months. Don't forget the owner of the capital, even though it's interest-free, wants his money back after 12 months. He doesn't want profit on it, but he wants his money back after 12 months. So that's the risk. The risk of not being able to give him if you put your money in that kind of investment is present. So how do you mitigate that risk? Now, the point I'm trying to make is that it is debt, you know, debt that does not carry any form of markup or interest or any form of return is as risky. How much more where that debt is carrying some costs? That becomes even more risky, more so for real estate, right? Um, so the debt fund, interest-free loan called ASAN, how do we apply it? What level of application are we going to use? Or how much of it do we put into the supply and the demand side of real estate, right? Share a compliance fund, but the owner of the fund wants his money back. And in fact, most of the time, you know, um, it doesn't give you the time. It means that it then becomes so difficult to use interest-free loan. Uh, hello, okay, I'm, I hope I'm there. It then becomes so difficult to use interest-free yes, loan for real estate, except you can convert real estate to a commodity. You can make it run like, 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 um, like some kind of commodity trade. You know, ninety days, sixty days. You know. How can you convert real estate? Everyone 180 days, three months. How can you make the liability? You know, by the time you match it to the assets, it runs like a commodity so that return gets back to everybody quickly, right? So yes, yeah, give it to a developer, tell that, okay, one year I'm gonna be done. Two years, it's still working on, it's still working on the site, you know? Even though, even where there's no cost of fund, there's still a problem. You don't have the fund can ask for his money anytime. So what do we then do as, investment of fund managers. How do we address this situation? There's another type of funding called safekeeping or what Safekeeping is like interest-free loan, it's like a code. However, however, in the, in the case of safekeeping, the return is flexible. It can be any amount. There may be no return. There could be return. But whenever the person wants his money back, you must give him or her his money, right? You must give the money back, right? How much of it can we put into the supply? and the demand of real estate, either locally or globally for it. Now, let's move to the next one, which is what we call a partnership deposit. You know, the right term is Mudaraba, right? A partnership deposit. In that deposit, the investor is saying, hey, Trust Bank, Trust Bank, Atto, I'm gonna give you 200 million Naira. This 200 Naira, 200 million Naira, put it in, your portfolio of real estate, right? You know, I don't want to cook. I have enough to cook. I don't buy to cook anymore. I bought so much already. I bought federal governments to cook. You know, I wait for seven years, no problem. I want to invest for 365 days, one year. At the end of one year, give me my money back and I want my return to be a little bit better than what I got from to cook. I said, okay, we can do that. We can do that. And let, let's take this money. Let's put in construction, or let's create um, a portfolio of mortgages. Again, I'm using the word mortgages because of convenience, really. Um, under Islamic finance, we don't have mortgages. We have home finance, right? But for the purpose of convenience, okay, let, let's create a portfolio, an asset class, you know, of mortgages or home finance. So because 100 people working in Shell or Chevron or, you know, all companies, you know, want to buy 100 houses, you know, we have gathered them and they're willing to pay us every month. You know, we can now create a portfolio for them. And so part of the return, we share it with the owner of capital, right? And I'm going to talk about that again further as I go into, as I go into other forms of, of, of mortgages, if you like, right? Now, there's also what we call a Wakala contract, agency contract. 
You see, why I put that in black is because it is not equity and it is not debt. For color agency, it's not equity and it's not debt. It has its own unique features, even though it's got features of both. You know, it has features of equity and features of debt, right? Um, the investor says, the same investor says, hey, um, Bashir, I want to put my 200 million naira in this particular um, um, Ikeja project. You know, you're building 20 units there. Um, you know, it's going to cost you uh, 1 billion naira. You know, I want to invest 200 million out of the 1 billion in, into it. I'm going to invest it for 18 months. Because it's going to take 18 months to build it and sell. Build it, sell it, and give my return. Give me back my 200 million plus profits. Then you, Trust Bank at all, just take your agency fee. So the risk is not on you, you know. So Trust Bank Atta is coming in as an agent to say, okay, bring your money, Mr. Depositor, Mr. Developer, you know, we're gonna help you make sure it works out. You know, Trust Bank Auto collects and collect agency fee. And then Trust Bank Auto is very happy, collect a fee. Now the fee can be collected at the end or as agreed. Now these two, partnership and agency, they are very appropriate for real estate um, investments. So we're gonna talk about, again, after my last slide for the question, for the first set of questions, I'm gonna explore other, other forms as we go on. But before then, let's quickly round up issues around, uh, around liability deposits. How can, we get equity funds, you know? Can a business, a business that needs to pay 33% tax in Nigeria, say, hey guys, here's 1 billion naira, I'm giving it to you equity, you know, pay me back in five years, you know, my man buy out, take us out at the end of five years. Can we get that in Nigeria? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe from profit, somebody that made a lot of profit and say, okay, from my profits, I can put in so much. Alternatively, let's chase it from somewhere else. Let's chase it elsewhere around the world, right? Let's chase it. You know, let's go to another country and look for that kind of equity. You know, tailored towards real estate development, right? So we're gonna bring this money. You know, maybe it's coming at a much cheaper price, or because it's convenient, I can turn it over several times, right? Let's use it for real estate development. So Mudaraba and Musharaka um, kind of deposits, they can be big scars, right? Now the question is. If they are scars, it then means that um, we cannot rely so much on them, except we have them in our possession. But more, more appropriately, the red circle, right? Also kind of circle, right? Um, where you have partnership and agency will be the most appropriate at this time, right? Now let's go to the facility side. Somebody wants to buy a house, you know, live in the UK, right? He wants to buy a house. Now the house does not exist yet. In fact, they're just filling the water around um, Orange Island. They're just filling it, you know, but he wants to buy it. He really, really wants that house. In fact, it's a group of friends, you know, there are five of them. The one kind of design, you know, the one that kind of house they're living in, 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 um, in the UK, in London, you know, um, Stanmore, right? They love Stanmore so much. They love, they love the kind of houses there. So they want to build exactly the same thing. A trust bank actor can come and say, hey guys, not a problem, we'll build it for you put it for you based on your specification. Let your mortgage or your own finance start to run now. You start to pay us now. We're not going to wait until we finish building. Let it, so it's an off-plan mortgage due to order is this now, right? Off-plan contract. It starts to run now, you know? We book the facility, it starts to run like a mortgage now. It starts to pay, it starts to perform on day one, right? In the same vein, we can use a forward lease. A Jara or so far, a Zimba. Again, I'll, I'll avoid the Arabic terms, right? So a forward lease. So in the case of a forward lease, and in the case of a build to order, they're similar. One is a sale contract, one is a lease contract. If I've got questions in that area, I will address them more, right? But for now, let's keep it simple, right? But the point is that it's still water, we're gonna fill it up, or it's still bush somewhere in Nabuja or so, right? But we can create a mortgage and it can perform on day one, right? So we'll push the risk. The performance risk and the construction risk will push it to we transfer it to the off-taker. It's very appropriate. A lot of financial institutions will love that because the risk does not sit with them, it sits with somebody else. There's an indemnity to say, hey, 
um, this house you want, to, you want to buy is not constructed yet. So you're going to take the risk where there's an extension of development and everybody's fine. And based on that, we'll go ahead. Now the other type, existing assets, where the asset is existing, the house is already built, you know, is off island, right? Or the houses or the units are built already, they're there. You can use a lease contract. Trust bank after all will buy, maintain ownership and lease. But it's lease that ends with ownership, if you like, lease to own. We'll buy, maintain ownership, collect the title, it's ours. It's like, it's like a finance lease, you know? And then we, 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 the obligor, the customer in this case, or the person that wants the mortgage, you know, will be paying, will be servicing that facility. You know, assuming the property is for five, is for, you know, assuming the property is 50 million naira, and, um, you know, there's a markup of 10 million, and they just keep it simple, that's 60 million. So um, the lessee is going to pay 60 million over a period of time. When that transaction ends, Trust Bank Atto will sell the property to the clients at a nominal price. You know, that price, it can even be a gift, except perhaps there are some costs that Trust Bank has taken in the past, such as perhaps sometime, you know, transfer costs, you know, and if possible, sometimes if agreed from, from, from the beginning, um, Takaful insurance cost. Now, the markup one, so for lease, Jara, it can be long term, 10 years, 15 years, you can pay early, you can exit, there's no penalty for early payment. Markup, markup is better is short, one year, max, 18 months. Anything more than that becomes unviable to the, to, well, to the, to the obligor, to the investor. Diminishing partnership is the most equitable one. You know, the client wants to buy a house, the house is 50 million naira, it puts down 10%, or sorry, it puts down 20%, which is 10 million naira. Trust Bank also puts the remaining 40,000 naira, and the customer pays rent and the cost of the assets on the 40 million that belongs to Trust Bank Atto until such a time where the customer will be the full owner, right? Again, if there are questions in my area, I'll take it. The good thing about diminishing partnership is that where the customer doesn't have a job anymore, he wants to pay for 10 years, after eight years, he doesn't have a job anymore, he cannot pay, right? It means that I have to sell the assets, maybe it's after 90 days or as agreed, sell the assets at the present value or present value considering the first sale value, right? And then share it based on everybody's contribution. So if Trust Bank's ownership is 20%, you take 20% of the new value, eight years time, and the customer takes 80% of the new value, right? So in Nigeria, what we have experienced is that value usually goes up or stabilizes sometimes, just a few times when they're a bit. Um, in, in, in more advanced economies like um, the UK, the US, Canada, and we have found cases where property value can even go down. So where it goes down, you still share based on that, you know, based on the ratio. Now, construction, let's go to construction, supply side. In the case of, this, of supply side, the same contract we're using for demand side is also applicable, you know, built to other and forward lease, which I've explained earlier on, um, so I don't get you bored, right? Um, and then on the bottom, you have Musharaka and Mudaraba, which is similar to the equity fund, right? The equity fund. So the equity fund can be on the, on the, on the demand side, on the supply side, or should I say on the liability side and on the asset side. Now, equity is equity anywhere in the world. JV, partnership, joint venture. You know, the owner of the land, you know, says, hey, you know, trust bank asset, come and be my partner, come and sign JV with me. So under Islamic finance, a financial institution can go into direct JV with clients or customers under Islamic finance, globally, global based standard. A, 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 a financial, an Islamic financial institution can buy 500 trucks and keep it on his books and say, I'm leasing them out. So a financial institution can be a leasing company. You can buy 200 units of houses and rent them out and give to Airbnb and be collecting rent. As you, you can build hostels, you know, in five universities and be collecting rent, you know, right? So you can play in that space, you know, as an Islamic financial institution. Now investors can say, Hey, 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 trust bank at all. Guess what? I don't want to invest in your portfolio of, of, of housing. I want to invest in this particular hostel project. That's my interest. 
I like the return, that's why I want to invest. I want to invest in the husband property because I think husband is nice, the rental is good, I prefer that. I want to invest in the Keja one, right? Um, so those are the kind of arrangements that um, we can actually have, you know, under Islamic finance. Let me take my last slide and then um, I'll be happy to take some questions after the last slide and we can continue thereafter. Now let's look at risk and return when it comes to different investment portfolios, right? Cash, you keep your cash somewhere. I mean, the cash stays there. The good thing is that the cash is not exposed to risk, you know, except the bank goes bust, you know, you know of course, the NDIC and all of that cover, right? So cash, you don't lose it, but you don't earn anything from it, except that inflation, it's the value. You know, inflation is about 30% now. So, so if you have your cash every year, you're gonna lose 13% of the value in today's Nigeria, right? So that's cash for you. Listed equities, the equity markets volatile, rather too volatile because of that volatility, right? Um, or volatility, it means that, um, you know, um, the return can be low. Again, there could be some very interesting shares we have found, especially the um, tech companies doing very well at this time, the global ones, um, your shares can just go up. Um, especially those that are taking advantage of the COVID lockdown, if you like. Um, investment instruments. You have to put your money in another bank, for example. You know, the return may not be high, but fair enough, you know, lower than rate of inflation, but fair enough. Sukuk, the last Sukuk that was done, federal government was at 11.2%. Is that a bad kind of investment secured by the federal government of Nigeria? But again, how do we then have a lot of other Sukuk, private Sukuk, real estate Sukuk? You know, you know, if there are challenges around it, again, in, in the next set of slides, we're going to go there. How do we say, how do we aggregate real estate projects from 10, 20 developers, you know? Alternate, alternatively, how do we identify 500 off-takers and say, hey, 500 off-takers, you know, we're going to create a pool of funds for you, a demand size to cook, right? We're going to generate the money and then we're going to fund you in a period, over a period of time. You know, it can even be longer than, you know, as, as agreed or based on the appetite of, of the economy or investors. But where I'm going is the yellow circle, real estate and private equity. Now, real estate and private equity, they may have high returns, but they also have very high risk. The risk that there won't be performance, I like probably will never be completed, right? Um, so why do I want to finance a project of a, a, a 200 unit estate? When I can start with just with just um, with just 20 units, bring me 20 off takers and I give you 20 units, right? 20 off takers, 20 units. You bring in another 20 off takers, I give I will build you another 20 units like that, you know. So how do you mitigate the risk? Even though the returns can be very good, right? But how do we mitigate that risk? So even though high returns, now if you combine real estate with private equity, it will mean that it will mean that you know, trust bank actor can directly build. So if you give it to a building construction company and it takes so much in terms of fee, it doesn't take any risk, it makes his money, it walks away, right? But in this case, what we're seeing is that, what we're seeing is that let trust bank actor build themselves, manage costs, right? And be able to give better returns to investors. And we're going to explore that in the other slides and based on questions that will come. Um, so for either the supply or the demand side as construction or home finance, construction of own finance, we are able to package all of these transactions in a manner that is more attractive and in a manner that expands well, based on the Mercosur that I explained much earlier. Um, I think I'm going to stop there for now. I'll take some questions before we go to the next set of slides. Thanks. Okay, am I there? Okay, I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> lovely, lovely, I, I didn't know that I was muted. So I have two people with their hands up and I have four questions from the chat. I think I will take the questions from the chat first. Uh, so in, and the first question is that uh, when you were talking about the liabilities on the slide, somebody asked, where does the burden of loss fall in the, falls uh, in the model you were describing? I think that was when you were talking about somebody calling you to say that they've invested in Sukuk and they want to try another, uh, they want to try another option. So the person is asking, where does the burden of loss falls? 
Can I take that on. question first? I, I like to change it. I have enough yeah. time. Let me take that question first. We'll move to the next one. So let me go back to that slide. Um, under Islamic finance, you know, you can actually have fixed income arrangements, fixed income investments, right? So um, maybe I should use one of my slides, you know, at the bottom to answer this question, right? Um, it's an appendix. So let's use um, this one. Let's use the least one. Let's use this one, right? So somebody comes and says, hey, Charles Makato, I want to buy... I want to buy a house, you know. Um, the house is 200 million naira, is in Banana Island. And we agree, no problem, 200 million naira, pay. Now, we put a fix, have a look at this blue box on the right side. We put a fixed margin on it, you know, a fixed margin of 25% per annum. Fixed margin, fixed. I will call it fixed income. Because of that fixed margin, right? Um, the risk, so, so there's a, they, they, you, can, you can determine a fixed return from that. Unlike a partnership where profits or loss is always established, there could be profit and there could be loss, right? In this case, you still want to play safe. You don't want to take a lot of risk in, at, at this time, right? And we're going to buy your house. They're going to be paying us 25% per annum, right? From that 25% per annum, uh, let me take you to another slide, right? Um, so let's assume that you are putting your money on the base of Modaraba partnership, right? Look, look at this arrow. I don't know if you can see my, my arrow. This arrow, right? There's partnership, there's sale, and there's lease. But we're saying, hey, guy, we're not going to do partnership with you. We don't think we should do partnership at this time. We're going to do sale or lease. In the case of a lease, there's a markup of 25%. On the base of that markup, right, we're going to make our profits from it. Right, and so and so, um, there's no serious loss. However, if you look at the table underneath, the table underneath shows that there's a reserve, there's a position. We try to say, okay, you know what? Let's set aside part of the total profit from this business, not just from this business, even from all our other assets. Let's set it aside into a pool, into a portfolio, into a fund, like a reserve. You know, so during the economic crash, 2008, 2009, a lot of Islamic banks, if not all of them, were hardly affected. Why? Because they had the pool of what we call profit equalization reserve. They had the pool of profits set aside for over 20 years, plus or minus. Because they had that pool of funds, which they don't earn as profit, they just keep it there. They were able to mitigate or smoothen repayment to depositors. Right? So, Yes, yes, so there's loss, there could be loss, even though it is a markup, but we have been setting aside a certain part into a portfolio, number one. Number two, there could also be, there could also be a, a provision, loss, you know, a loss provision, apart from that one, that can be set aside. There are other modes of reserve that I won't go into. Um, yes, you know, real estate, if it's not to cook, and if it's not REIT, real estate investment trust, will be subjected to withholding tax in Nigeria of 10%, right? So we'll take that out. So we'll, we'll set aside some profit anyway, you know, that we're not, and nobody's earning it. The owner of capital is not earning it. The, the financial institution is not earning it. We have kept it into a cooler until such a time when we are into a bit of challenge or challenges, and they will call for it, you know? Yeah, so um, we have mitigated that risk well enough. If I, if I answer your question well, I'll take the next question. Okay, so uh, the next question says, how can a real estate uh, consultant leverage on the wide gap of housing deficits to get investors? Okay, um, so if I understand the question, the question is that how can we um, meet up the gap to, by getting a lot of investors, if I understand it well? Um, but she, okay. I, she is actually asking as a consultant, how can she leverage oh, on the oh. wide gap? Or maybe oh. all of us as a group. Oh, as a consultant. Okay, okay, that's fine. I mean, the cool, I mean, the, the, the market, um, a, a lot of analysts believe that um, real estate is, um, it truly takes away poverty because you can employ a lot of people, a lot of lawyers, 
Let me look at this model, for example, very quickly without taking a lot of time. Um, this is a Sukuk model. It can also be used for any form of project um, finance. You know, okay. um, any form of project finance, all right? You have the trustee somewhere there, you know. Um, I didn't put the lawyer. You have the lawyer somewhere hanging at one corner. Um, you have stockbroking companies that can help you sell or raise money, you know, for a fee. You, know, you can put all of them either in the consortium or in the SPV as the case may be. Um, you have the guys providing um, guarantees, you know, either cash guarantee or, or other forms of guarantees, you know. Um, you have the person that's going to supply materials again. If that person is a party, either is in a consortium or is a member of real estate professionals, right? So you have a lot of professionals in, in, the, in, the, in the project finance structure or the Sukuk structure, right? That can actually play roles here, you know? Um, so, I mean, maybe, I mean, something we can explore as, as we go on to say, okay, what are you truly contributing to this? Have you perfected your area of specialties? You know, are you special? So if you're special, why not? Um, we, can, we, can, we can start to look at that. So I'll take the next question. Okay, I think you're on mute. Okay, okay. So I, uh, before I start to call the people with their hands raised, I want to quickly join these two questions together. Uh, can you hear me, sir? Oh, I can hear you, I can hear you. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? But I can hear you. I'm can here. anybody hear me? Yes. Okay, okay. So I have two questions and I get non-interest. Okay. Can one can one get non-interest loans in order to buy house or shopping malls to use them for rent house service? How does one get such loans in Nigeria? What are and then is also any property being developed for sale at the moment? Okay, so a bit of, I mean, we're breaking at some point, but however, let me just see, let me try and capture the question the way I understand it. The first one is, can you get a loan or facility to um, buy houses or shopping malls and, you know, others that, other that happen? For, yeah, there are. For there, retail. There, sorry? For, for rent house service. For rent house service. service. Yeah, I mean, if it's, if it's viable, why not? Um, because, I mean, most of the time, um, the way our financial system has been structured is such that we don't want to be in the game for too long, um, you know? So it means that we want it short enough. Um, so you're going to be telling me that um, you want to go into some kind of real estate project or transaction or buy those houses or shopping malls as the case may be, that will allow you pay back quickly, right? So in, this, in, in, in Lagos, in Lagos, you know, a property around Akoka or mainland or part of Suleri, it probably take you about 20 years, 25 years to pay back, right? Um, in Keja, you probably struggle with 15, 18 years. Even in Lekki one, you struggle with about 12 years. In Ekoi, you struggle with slightly less than 10 years sometimes, right? So, so that depends on where that property is in terms of how can the rental income help you pay back quickly? You know, they're going to be using rent. Then that rent, what if there's a void? Nobody's taking it. Do you have an agreement with some companies to say, I'm renting this place for 10 years from you. Yeah, why not? So, so if you say, okay, buy me this house, you know, on GDO Key or somewhere, and you tell me that there's this ABC oil and gas company, they want to pay um, 10 years rent, you know, not in advance, they're going to be paying every 10 years, every, every time, either in advance or as the case may be, you know, but they're going to be paying the rent, you know, the 10 year contract, you know. In fact, I've seen a case whereby, whereby, there was actually a real contract in place. And after five years, um, the company said, hey, we don't want to pay anymore. We want to move back to our country, <laughs> you know? So even in such a case, there could be risk. The risk of the other party saying, I'm not doing it anymore, you know? Yeah, there could be penalty and they're gonna move out, they'll be void again, right? But yes, that, that can work where there's a defined contract. That's on the one. On the other hand, even where there's defined contract, right? Or deal on the table, so I'm going to pay for 10 years. Does that company have the ability to truly pay based on their financials, based on their trend? Are they giving other sources of repayment 
just in case there are primary source of repayments, you know, there's a problem with it. You know, so when you have all of these things in place, yeah, why not? There's a deal on the table, right? Um, what, what, what would be very difficult is to say, oh, I want to build this hostel in Akoka, close to the University of Lagos. However, you know, the students will pay me so little and so much, and it's gonna take 20 years to pay back. You know, sometimes the students will be in school because of strike or whatever, that becomes difficult, right? So we can look at it on a one-to-one one -one basis to say, okay, let's look at this transaction. Let's see how good it is from, from the credit risk angle. Uh, let's, let's, let's measure our risk and our, and our profit and see whether it's viable. Yeah, we can look at it that way. I forgot the second part of the question. Can you come again, please? Uh, the second part of the question is, are there properties by, by trust bank for sale that you, whether you are, that you've de developed using this uh, scheme? Yes, yes. So I mentioned sometime that Islamic banks can, you can decide to go and buy <clears throat> um, 200 cars and be selling in the warehouse. But you know what, what will happen? The risk is inventory risk. The risk that a new model will come out the next day and still selling, right? The other risk is that you want to build 50 houses, tie down other people's capital, and then you're just thinking that, okay, maybe they're going to come and they won't come. You know, alternatively, you're sure. thinking you sell, you build for 40 million and sell for 50 million. And, and um, at the end of the day, all the people that are willing to buy, willing and able to buy those houses are saying, but we can only pay 35 million. That's a loss already. So it's always better to tailor these things perfectly well, perfect tailoring to say, okay, Mr. Man, you live in Canada. You want to buy a house. This is your income with some credit check on you. Or you live in the UK or you live in Nigeria. You want to buy this house. This is your cash flow, see your cash flow. And your wife is also earning some money. You also have another business and all of that. And, and um, we see that I can only afford the house of 30 million naira. You know, on a light hand note, you know, I teach in Dr. Bashir. Dr. Oh, Bashir. I know. I, know. Yeah. I know you are you're a lecturer and you will spend the whole day taking us through this, which is good. Uh, Sister Mutia, so I think what we should do, uh, because we're running out of time, we have one hour left, uh, and we have a lot of people that are participating. Uh, I'm suspecting there will be a lot of more questions. Uh, so let's yes, take sir. your presentation. Okay. I don't think you should spend too much time on your presentation, even me, when you start talking of this Musharaka and uh, all that things. I will just be nodding my head. Only you, Sandy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so let's take let's take the, your presentation, and then give room to be able to take a lot of questions. In your in your answering the questions, you will then be able to go to some of your slides. You understand, so that yes. people can get uh, benefit from participation. The other part is that you've been talking a lot about uh, uh, big volume investors. Yes. Can you focus a bit more on retail investors? So if I want to put 5,000 Naira, if I want to do 10,000 Naira, how can I participate and still benefit? Uh, yes. Have the same benefit that a 200 million Naira investor will get. Yes, okay, thank, thank okay. you very much. Sir. I really appreciate that. Okay, so I will run through, I mean, the initial plan was to run through the presentation first, but so let me run through very quickly. Um, just a few more slides. Um, and I think I want to, let, let, me, let me come here. I think that that's where we are. So, so let's look at um, a, a transaction where I want to do a small project. Um, while we're talking, somebody actually sent me a message that can I invest 50,000 Naira? And I said, oh yes, you can invest 50,000 Naira. Um, so we have a portfolio and we've put together a, a big asset class, you know, or, or it's just, let's even keep it simple. Let's just say five people don't want to buy um, five houses of 20 million naira each. That's just 100 million naira. Now we need to raise money and to put into this investment. Um, and then we gather a lot of investors together. So, okay, investors, come and, come and invest as low as 20,000 naira. You know, invest for a minimum of one year or six months, as the case may be. You know, and then we can give you so much return. You know, right? So, let me just ignore all of this again. Let me go straight to um, what we should be looking at, right? To so, say, okay. Um, there's, a, there's a Naira asset bag note. I'm also going to talk about the dollar, um, you know, a foreign one alongside. There's a, this asset bag note. Um, so on the one hand is the assets, the real estate, right? On the other hand is notes. That is the liability side, if you like, the deposit side. And somebody says, hey, we're saying that, okay, in this term sheet, 
and your minimum investment is 20,000 Naira. If you invest 20,000 Naira, but we're going to hold your money for at least, you know, 180 days, that's six months. You know, you must invest for at least 180 days or for one year, as the case may be, you know. And we're going to give you profits of, like I mentioned earlier on, um, we expect that um, profit to clients in a real estate transaction should not really be more, you know, than most other ones, where, where um, there's a direct construction side, you know, so we're, we're able to control costs as much as possible, right? We're able to do that. Um, and, then, and then everybody puts in their money together. I uh, will take in a little bit here and there. Um, like one cooperative with about you know, 200 members, another cooperative with uh, 500 members, um, you know, staff of Trust Bank, you know, at all, and everybody putting money into this portfolio. And then we're able to raise, say, in this case, available side, let's just say three billion era. We raise three billion era in one month, for example, 180 days to 365 days, you know, expected returns, or expected rentals between 11.7 to wherever, 15, 18 percent as the case may be, right? And sharing ratio, let's just keep it simple, 50-50. 50-50 after we must have taken out the profit equalization reserve I talked about. So we have taken out the reserve that we're going to be keeping somewhere, you know? So when there's a problem, we can take out of that money, right? Um, but we're saying that let's share 50-50, depending on how much you're investing, right? And everybody's happy. Minimum invest investments, so in this slide, I'm showing one, one million error, but let's say it's 20,000 error, and everybody's happy. You have a unit of that real estate project by investing that 20,000, you have a unit, you know, and then you have part of the returns. Um, we tell you that, okay, if you want to exit in 180 days, no problem, you can exit. If you want to remain in the investment, it's fine. Um, and of course, as time goes on, you can increase your investment. There are some people, they're interested they, they collect salary. They don't have, they can't put down 1 million at once, but they want to invest every month over a period of one year or two years, as the case may be. Yes, so we're able to also, also have, accept that. Um, rather than a Mudaraba deposit, a partnership deposit, we can say, let's take this money under a safekeeping contract, right? Let's take this money under a safekeeping contract. We put in that your money, you know, on, at the end of 12 months, we'll look at the average return or based on the profit that we have made and give you profit on it, you know? But in the case of a that's safekeeping, right? The profits, you know, won't be defined, you know, won't be defined, um, but at least you could get profit on it. Um, so we can have that kind of agreement for people. Um, so again, um, one of the things that Trust Bank is exploring um, very well is to look at even foreign portfolios, you know? Um, if they are listed, you know, with, with Security and Exchange Commission of that country, yes, we could also advertise it openly. Um, where they're not listed, it could be sold privately um, as, as, as required by the rules and all of that. Um, again, we can simply have a partnership or a joint venture, you know, if you like, you know, I'm trying to avoid the Arabic term, but if you like, a Mushraka contract with the other party that we're bringing some money, you're also bringing some money, you know, let's build together, you know, and then when you sell, give us return within this range and everybody's happy, you know? So I'm aware there's a, there's a good Canadian portfolio, right? Um, of course, you know, the idea is to have portfolios even in the UK and in the US so that people can actually earn um, foreign exchange, you know, from the deposits or from the money that they've got. Um, and again, the idea also is to see how we can give better return. And that's the idea behind all of this. Again, I talked about expansion of wealth. You know, if you want to invest locally, maybe you get so little, you want to invest with us in foreign portfolio, you get a lot more or slightly more, at least more, at least, more than what you'll have gotten in, in a regular uh, way of investing your money locally. And there could be some other benefits, you know, immigration benefits to a very large extent. And that's coming as part of the package, you know, um, um, which can be very interesting. Um, so these are the kind of opportunities that we're looking at for, for um, the Canadian portfolio, for example, we can say, do minimum of ten thousand Canadian dollars. You know, uh, if there's a need, you know, there's demand. You know, we can aggregate smaller investors into a basket, and then when it gets to a particular amount, we can include it in the investment. You know, right? So those are opportunities that um, we can actually explore together. I've got some diagrams of lovely Canadian portfolio um, for those that own their kids to go to school in Canada at some point. And as a result of investing in this portfolio. We'll be able to help you organize some of these things. And for those that want 
some kind of um, you know, special visas or entrepreneurial visas. Sometimes you may be lucky also um, to have um, this investment. Now, a lot of these assets, either the liability or the asset side, they've been certified by the Sharia board and Nigeria will call them advisory committee of experts. So they've looked at the portfolio and they've said, oh, this is Sharia compliant, you know, um, for the real estate portfolio, which is good. Now, what happens with Sharia board globally is that from time to time, you go back to them anytime there are changes or there's a variation, you go back to them and say, hey, advisory committee of experts, kindly help us look at this again. We've made some changes, we want you to approve for us, yeah, right? So, um, I mean, from time to time, we will be having such meetings with them. Um, I think I'm gonna be rounding up shortly. Again, I'll try to describe, I'll try to describe a typical investment, you know, with a farm and company, you know, that's share compliant, like Trust Bank at all. To say, I want to invest 10,000 Naira, I want to invest 20,000 Naira, I want to invest 100,000 Naira, I want you to put my investment in a real estate portfolio. I want you to use a sale or a lease mode so that the risk is low. And we're going to use a partnership mode of finance, make sure that the risk to me is also low. You know, but aside all of this risk, and uh, we have set aside the PER, profit declaration result, to make sure that um, as much as possible risk is mitigated and everybody's happy. On the other note, we have the, the, the agency contracts, you know, what we call Wakala deposits. You know, one person, either an entity or an individual is saying, hey, Trust Bank at all, you know, I'm, I'm happy that you invest in this particular project, you know, just take a fee for doing that, you know, again, it's going to be subjected to withholding tax, you know, there could be some other results, um, there's profit declaration result, there could be investment risk result, investment risk reserve is a reserve you take from the customer's deposit, um, we've not started using that in Nigeria, and in Malaysia, um, they, they're not even using any of these reserves, but I guess the economy is a lot more stable, where you have unstable economies like ours, we always advocate that you set some money aside, you know, to, to mitigate your risk. Um, I've described a markup sale, right? You buy the phone for 100 Naira, you put a markup on it of, of, of 10 Naira or 20 Naira, that markup is fixed. It's, it cannot be changed, fixed, cast in stone, right? So in this case, um, you buy a house for 20 million, you put a markup of 5 million on it, that's 25 million, you know, um, and that's for a year. It can be a fixed amount and it can be, it can be, it can be a fixed percentage. They're both, they're both correct on that area. Right. Um, my last slide, I guess it's my last slide, is very similar to markup sale, but it's a lease contract. You buy an asset, you know, either on the supply or demand side, and then simply share at the markup. So, um, I mean, there's a group of people um, that we're speaking with, they are, they want to buy, they can only afford houses of 500 million naira, you know, just somewhere outside Abuja. And we're thinking that why not, we can, uh, with the developer, we can work together perhaps to build houses for you, build out maybe three or four thousand, three or four million per unit and sell to them at five million per unit. You know, they're going to pay over say five, 10 year period, even that five million, you know, and that's because you have the, you have, there's, there's an agreement with the off-takers, say, okay, a thousand of you that can afford to pay five, five million per unit, um, come and buy these houses, you know. Um, let's agree that you're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna build that, you're gonna buy it. Um, so that remains also work. So again, we accept every kind of deposit. The only thing is that um, for real estate development to a very large extent, um, the money cannot be too short. You know, um, there, could be, there, there could be extreme cases to say, okay, I want to invest for six months. Assuming the person says, but I have some money, I want to invest for just three months. Not a problem. We can still accept the money for three months. And then before the investment matures, there's another investor that will come in to replace that investor, you know, for another three months. So that means that there must be evidence of cash flow in that transaction so that I can pay um, Sharia compliant rentals to that investor, right? Um, we have um, guidelines for property development. Again, uh, we're running out of time. Um, I'm not going to go through the guidelines, but we're happy to share the slides. Um, if you want to play on the demand side, if you want, like, if you like, on finance or mortgage, what are the things you need to put on the table? I've got them there. Other requirements. And if you want to be a developer, you know, or you, you want to do transactions with trust bank at all, what are the things you need to put on the table? You know, but again, um, a good summary will be that, and this is my last slide, a good summary will be that um, you need to have your off-takers on ground. 
you know, because that's what makes it viable. But like I mentioned earlier on, we want to take the risk with the obstacles as much as possible. On this note, I think I'll just round up here and take questions. I can then refer to other slides from time to time. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, it's been a wonderful session. Uh, mashallah, alhamdulillah. Well done. Okay, so if you have any question to ask for those people that were raising their hands earlier, uh, you can raise your hand now. Okay, so the most, uh, the most, uh, the the FAQ for today's session has been: Would you share your slides? But you've mentioned that you'll be happy to do that. So you will share the slides. We will drop them. Hopefully, we would send. We would either send it to you via email. So for those of us who registered or we'll drop it on the MMC platform for you to access, or both of it. So we have Mr. Ismail Prasasi, please unmute and ask your question. So somebody asked in the chat that, do you partner with uh, companies, uh, organizations such as BOU uh, with your transactions? Okay. Um... Sorry, just, just to um, double show. Uh, what about BOU? Just to be double show. I have, okay, so I, I have no idea. BOI, NIDB, FM, the Federal Mortgage Bank, and Co. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay, so um, um, again, we can partner with um, any of these institutions, as the case may be. Um, in the case of um, Fire Market Bank, I know they support um, construction finance in particular formats, you know, um, that's on the supply side. But on the demand side, it's only the primary mortgage institution, the primary mortgage banks that can actually come in there, you know, won't be able to come in on the demand side, you know. Um, but on the supply side, yes, we could come in somehow. Um, again, the same thing for NMRC, Nigeria Mortgage Refinance Company, they could refinance so we can create a portfolio of mortgages or own finance. And NMRC, through any of their members, you know, through a bank or a mortgage bank, they can come and refinance us and take us out. And so I just want to invest for just one year. You know, I will get all the opticals ready. Um, Nigeria Mortgage Refinance Company was very happy to come and take us out quickly, you know, on, on, on the basis of the opticals, you know, through a bank that is a member of NMRC or through a mortgage bank that is a member of NMRC. In case of BOI, yes, again, we could partner. Uh, for BOI, most of the time, they want to have they want the they want the facility to have uh, they want you to put that guarantee to our funding, right? The guarantee from another bank. Yeah, so why not? Um, we could also do that. Um, so a, a non interest financial institution can partner practically with everybody or everyone, provided that the terms of the transactions are, are compliant. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Mr. Ismail Fasasi, uh, is your has your question been answered? Your answer lowered now otherwise no. please ask the question thank you very much doctor thank you for this great presentation i'm happy to hear from you please i i want you to elaborate more on the aspect of property financing uh, developers thank you okay um thank you very much so i just run through um, not run through, but I'll just sit, go back here again. Um, so I'll talk about the fact that um, on the supply side, you know, where I'm sharing my arrow now, um, we could clean that space, you know, using build to order, right? Or a forward lease, you know, but from a risk perspective, right? We don't like to take our risk with the developer, you know, because even if you give a performance bond for my insurance company, it's, it's not worth so much, right? Um, a performance bond, a bank guarantee from a bank, except it covers the entire facility amount 120%, right? A lot of developers don't have that, right? Um, so, so the option will be to, to put down the off takers so that we can create either off-plan mortgages or existing asset mortgage, if you like, for all the, all the off takers. Because again, one of, one of the very, you know, one of the scary parts, if you like, of real estate or difficult parts is when you have actually built, you think you can sell for 20 million per unit or 10 million per unit. But really, the person that wants to buy can only pay 6 million and then you can't sell. But where you have identified your buyers and your buyers are the ones paying us. So 
we get all the buyers, you know, together, we profile them, ensure that they are willing and able to pay. On the basis of that strength, we then give them, we give the buyers facility where the money gets to you. But even when the money is getting to you, you still need to put down some kind of, you know, bond to show that you can perform, right? You also need to at least um, show that you have the competencies to do that volume of transaction and all of that. Yeah, so yes, we can deal in such, you know, provided that um, your opticals are on ground. Thanks. Okay, oh, so I've been getting a question from other people from I, uh, from other sectors. So some people were asking if some of the uh, the, pro the process that you've shared can be applied to manufacturing, agri, and all of the, all the other Thanks. outside Same of real way. estate. Yeah, they can be applied perfectly well. Perfectly well. Okay. So, so there's that, a quick question. Than, okay, in the case of agri, rather than build to other, it will be salam, but it's the same model, very similar, right? But it can be applied, yeah. Okay, so there's another quick one. With fixed profits, can we be sure of Sharia compliance? Yeah, thank you very much. So um, the, the term that we use under Islamic finance is the expected profits, right? That our expected profit is so much, right? And, and if you look at a template that I put in there, um, this, I think this, we put a range of profit. Uh, the profit will be between this and this, plus or minus, right? Um, however, however, even with expected profits, you can have fixed income notes under Islamic finance. And I've explained why. And you look at the case of Sukuk. The Sukuk is fixed income. The return is 11.2 per annum. Fixed income, right? Um, again, um, um, and that's because, you know, there's a full fit of the federal government that's backing it up, right? In our own case, uh, what we simply do is that, okay, expected income, even though we can give you so much, expected income within a range of so much or so little on the one hand, and then on the other hand, you know, put in place reserves so that even where we don't make as much profits, we're going to dip our hand into the reserve to make sure that you get what you expect to get. Now, fixed income does not apply all the time. You know, in the case of a Wakala, an agency, agency contracts, uh, which I've explained earlier on, um, so this gentleman puts in this money, you know, I'll put the money in a particular project, and it tells us that he wants a certain percentage of the profit. You know, as we are supposed to sell each unit for 100 naira, I end up selling for 90 naira. Is that 90 naira you're going to share? Because there's no 100 naira anymore. So in the case of agency contracts, <laughs> and, and so, Everything here, Wakala, joint ownership, partnership, all of these ones, you know, everything from here, you know, and all of these deposits, they can, they can fluctuate, you know, allow them. Thanks. Okay. Sister Sonny Silifat, please unmute and ask your question. Salam alaikum, Salabakatu. Doctor, thank you very much. My question is, what of an individual I have, let uh, assuming that I have my own site and I want to build on it, what can we do in this regard? Thank you. How are you? Okay, okay thanks. Um, so, your site, so we need to know, um, so your site, you want to just build your, your own house, you want to live there, for example, you're not even renting it out, right? Um, I did not put a build to order contract or rather model, however, this model can also be applicable. It's just two things trust bank gives you, as we mean 10 million naira. Trust Bank gives you 10 million naira to build. Build to other, you are building to other. And then from your cash flow, either from a salary or other businesses, you are paying Trust Bank back, you know. However, however, um, um, in, in an institutional contract, there they needs to be three parties. So you are the one that wants the facility. We have identified you. This is Trust Bank that is giving the facility. In reality, Trust Bank will give the money to the construction company or to the developer that will construct for you, you know, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the grounds that you'll be the one that will be paying back to the buyer. So that can work perfectly well, provided that um, your cash flow won't pay the amount that um, you want, including um, the expected profits to trust bank asset, trust bank um, at all, as the case may be. Okay, I don't know if uh, your answer has answered this question, but I'll ask still. Do you do home financing for individuals? 
Yes, yes. Um, so um, someone wants to buy a house. I think I mentioned that I want to buy a house of um, 20 million naira somewhere, and you have cash flow to show that you can conveniently pay. Yes, um, can use um, I've used this model to describe it. Um, to say, um, you can either buy. Yeah, so where it's off plan, we do build to order or we'll do a forward lease where it's not existing yet, right? Yeah, we can do on finance as you hear. And then where the house is already there, it's already existing. I come and say, I want to buy this house in Chevron Drive. I like it so much. You know, we apply any of these methods. If it's going to be long term, we apply a diminishing Musharaka, diminishing partnership. Uh, we can also use a Nigeria model for it. If it's short term, very short term, one year, one and a half years. We can use a markup sale, yes, so we can do that too. Okay, so somebody asked now, can a civil servant uh, benefit from such a, uh, such an arrangement? Oh, yes, yeah, certainly, certainly. So, so for civil servant, um, what we have discovered is um, um, if you want any of these, you could, but of course your cash flow must be able to accommodate it. In some instances, you'll be asked to put down a security deposit in the case of a lease finance or equity in the case of a diminishing partnership. That's, that is sufficient. So, you know, in most transactions from research and from practice, of course, when there's no skin in the game, most of the time they go bad. You know, that's just a trend, even globally, to a very large extent, right? So, yeah, so what we have discovered with civil servant is that um, um, because of, yeah, there could be some other income elsewhere, which you may not account for some time, uh, but, but the, the cash flow itself from the salary, you know, must be able to pay down you know, wherever the obligations are, you know. Alternatively, you will be asked to put down a lot more contribution, either equity or security deposit, you know, so that you can be eligible um, for, for, for financing. Okay, so Mr. Usman, Suleiman Usman, please uh, unmute and ask your question, sir. Mr. Usman, you're raising your hand. Please unmute and ask your question. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, Doctor. I was just curious, I wanted to find out what's the single obligo limit for the financing? Okay, um, yeah, thanks. I mean, if, if you go back to this slide, um, I mean, I just, I described the income levels in Nigeria. Um, so I'm aware that, um, you know, you don't want to have a pile of 200, 100 million naira houses and then there's different fault and then nobody can pay and can't even sell and if you want to sell you know the man is strong enough to take you to the court and you know, the court will say no don't sell you know so to a very large extent um if you look at the upper class many of them are their own homes so we don't even want to deal with them most of the time right if you look at the lower upper yes to a very large extent lower upper um upper middle class um so we should be looking at um single obligo depending on your income or your cash flow but, um, you know, I mean, I, I want to put, I, I want to deal in, um, I don't want to do anything, say, above 50 million naira. <laughs> you know, for uh, 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 Dr. Doctor Bashir, let's look at it in a different way. Okay. So the question is, uh, do we have single obligor limit? Yes, we do have single obligor limit yes. for the company. And it is regulatory based. Yes. Okay. However, it's not every individual that will qualify for the single obligor limit. The individual will then be based on your ability to repay. So somebody that is earning a net pay of 100,000 per month will probably not get the same level of loan like somebody that is earning 1 million per month. Okay. So although the company can do up to 200 million for individual, does not mean that everybody that come will get 200 million. It will then be determined and limited by the your ability to repay your capacity and your cash flow. Perfect, perfect. Thank you very much. I think I'll take that. Um, yeah, so, uh, um, please, uh, quickly, I would like to introduce for those of us that don't know. Uh, the last speaker is our boss, Elijah Bujima is our boss and is here. Thank you so much for the clarity, sir. Uh, okay. So, Mr. Dr. Shoy, did you want to add something else before I ask uh, Mr. Saeed Alaya to ask his question? Please, let's go on to the next person, please. Thanks. Okay, so Mr. Alaya, please ask your question. Yeah, um, thank you so much, Mr. Uh, Dr. Bashir. We really appreciate that. Um, 
but what what, what we have um, the, the main problem that I've actually identified with um, this plant it might not be true actually is that there is no enough uh, liquidity in the market for people to actually exchange their assets. Uh, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you look through the conventional banking system, whereby I can buy my equity and sell it, I can buy my um, treasury bits and sell it. How can we create a market that can be liquid for people to um, own and sell? Yeah, that, that's my question. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thanks. I'm just trying to understand your question. I mean, the Sukuk was oversubscribed in five folds. Um, that shows that there's liquidity, even post COVID, you know, or uh, post lockdown, if you like. Um, so, so I think there's a lot of liquidity in the market. It's just to channel it. Um, but I think the other part is that. Okay, um, we don't Dr. Have Bashir, that, that, that also, your, your liquidity discussion has to be in buying and in selling. So yes, there's liquidity for when there's IPO uh, likes to cook. Uh, people are able to come in, but to exit is not as easy. Yes. And that is understandable because of the knowledge gap in the market. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people believe that Islamic products are only for Muslims, uh, except for institutional investors that understand that you don't have to be a Muslim to invest in this product. Mm -hmm. uh, so what we're trying to create is to, to bridge that knowledge gap in such a way that people know that once you buy this asset, you can actually trade it. A number of people think that if you buy Sukuk for seven years, you have to hold it for seven years. So they don't even make attempts to trade it. However, there's a very creative market, as Dr. Bashir says, because there was oversubscription uh, when they did Sukuk, if people actually bring their Sukuk now, they are willing buyers. But people are not aware that they are buyers. It's to create the, there's a market that exists that people can bring back their instruments and they can trade. But yes, as you said, that, that gap exists and we have to, to, to bridge it. Yes, okay. Thank you very much. I think I also accept that. Um, and of, of course, I mean, um, if, if you invest in a real estate portfolio, um, there's also opportunity to, you know, um, exit early sometime if, if, there's, if there's a serious need for cash. You know, they will replace you with another investor. And that's exactly, that's what I was talking about, that we should talk about the retail uh, investors. Uh, the kind of product we're coming up with as such that you can bring your 50,000, you can bring your 100,000, of course, we know that uh, real estate is not 90 days, 180 days transaction. Mm -hmm. But if you want to invest in real estate, let's say income fund. Uh, uh, you can invest for 180 days. You, uh, because we know you are going out in 180 days, before that time comes, we'll find a replacement investor. And if we don't get, we'll have an arrangement where the, uh, the institution itself, there is, there is an, so we're, but as a general market, we, we are, we're doing uh, advocacy to ensure that there's adequate liquidity, there's adequate knowledge, and there's adequate information so that people know where to go to trade there. Yes. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you very much. I think I also accept that. So I think we can take another question. Um, okay, so something similar to what uh, okay, last, last year, last okay, year. Somebody, somebody is asking, what's the maximum tenure for home finance? Um, the maximum it, tenure. Yes, again, I mean, to a very large extent, um, I know that, um, I mean, you know, it can be in Nigeria, we avoid anything that is too long. Um, and then in the banks, for example, uh, we never like to exceed 10%, 10, 10 years. You know, however, um, for civil servants, for those, in, like, those I mean, lecturers, medical doctors, I know we're able to give 15 years. Um, so it's a function of that person's cash flow, the age, and all of that. You know, a couple of other, if you like, you know, um, requirements, you know, 
Um, it could be as much as it could be as long as fifteen sometimes. Yeah. Okay. So, Mr. Abdullah Lawa, please unmute and ask your question. Mr. All Abdullah. Right. I can hear you guys. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, my question here is okay for this individual self uh, home financing to say I am a salary earner. I work in the private sector, but I want to cushion my the payment of the uh, home financing with 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 inflow from my business. Is that possible? Yes, so a lot of um, I mean, I mean, you, you provide other sources of income, which is fine. Um, through the banks, you know, through the you know, legal system, yes, yeah, why not? Yes, we'll accept um, to a very large extent, um, on that that sort of cash flow, you know. So is is allowed to provide several sources of cash flow, you know. Um, that's fine. Thanks. Okay, so Mr. Dawei Jamio Oya Oya um, I hope I co I'm correct. Please uh, unmute and ask your question. Mr. Dari. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, welcome, Dr. Shedi. A, a very quick one. I, I, I'll be asking uh, my question from a developer's point of view. Is it not possible to partner with a developer based on the primeness of the land? Or in terms of the value of the land. Yes. Thank you. Okay, okay, lovely. Yes, so I mean, um, that can actually happen. Um, after analyzing the risk, we say, okay, do we want to partner with the developer or do we simply want to be the ones to um, act as a developer? You know, yes, but I mean, what, what I would just say is that um, there's nothing that cannot be explored really. Um, if we think that the risk is low and is viable, um, that can actually be explored. Um, but um, what we always like most of the time is where at least developers done extra work by putting down those that buy the units. You know, that makes life easy for everyone. Thank you. Sorry, in addition to that, uh, using developers actually build additional cost. Unless you have developers that buys into your idea of yeah. uh, creating low cost housing. Yeah. Uh, you know, it is uh, the cost you are able to pass it to the buyer because it's, it's a non-interest based kind of uh, uh, transaction. The cost you are able to pass it to the buyer is based on the markup. If you use developers most of the time, independent developers, your costs are, because they've already in, 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 uh, imputed their own high profit. So the model that we think works is that you, we as Trust Bank Arthur are the developer and also uh, the provider of fund. Then we get contractors that are reliable. This way you, minim you have removed the backup of the, de of the independent developer completely. And that makes it easier for your markup not to be exorbitant. And then you can easily pass this margin on top without, uh, without it being excessive to the participant. Yeah. Okay, doctor. Thank you very much. Oh, you very much. Sorry, I, sorry, I, sir. I just, allow me to say one on, on that, based on that. From the, from the last explanation, it's, it's obvious that a developer is totally locked out from this kind of scheme. That's how I see it. Though, just like you said, if you no, have a developer that are, believes developers in the concept, are not locked out. You know, that's, that's how I understand your last explanation. No, no, because no, no. Developers you are looking are at it, sir. Sorry, sir. Okay, you are looking at it from the cost because it's true, sir, that the developer would have built his own own uh, cost or own uh, his own uh, in, uh, profit or whatever. But you, there could be other arrangements where the developer that approaches a trust bank, an arrangement could be made that being his own project and is seeking for you know, finance, finance, or whatever other form of support, something should be able to be, we should be able to work something out. We actually work Both with parties. developers. We okay, actually sir. work with developers. And the way we work with developers is that we participate as uh, off-plan participants. Yes. 
In other words, I'm giving you funding and you are going to give me these properties at a particular cost at the end of the period. That cost you are going to give it to me must be uh, such that when I put my markup, it's not going to push me out of the market. For instance, if a retail buyer is going to buy a flat in Akoka for 10 million naira in two years' time, if I'm giving you the money now, you have to be ready to sell it to me at about 7 million because I'm giving you the 7 million naira now. That will allow me to be able to sell that property in two years' time at the market price of 10 million. So if developers are willing to work in that format, that will not push us out of the market, we'll participate. We have about three developers we're working with right now. And that's, that's the kind of model that we adopt. But there could be different ways of, uh, of uh, dealing, but we are not, we're not shutting out developers. Dr. Bashir, is that in line with Islamic? Uh, no, no, it's fine. It's, it's, it's agreed, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Triangle is fine. <laughs> Okay, uh, I have a question on Sukuk here. What is the position of your company to facilitate Sukuk for PPP projects, especially infrastructural projects? Okay, for PPP, I, I want to, if I can allow Mr. Jimbo to take that, for PPP, if you don't mind. Um, okay, know. for, for Sukuk, for PPP is a difficult one because once you bring in government into Sukuk, then you have to start going through, it depends on the level of the P, the public you are talking about, state, local government, or federal government. And then you, you need to start having national assembly approval. You need to have a state government. Up. So those ones mm -hmm. are a little bit complicated. We do it. We're new, as you may be, know that Dr. Bashu just left Stellin to take up this responsibility as a, a co-founder for this group. However, for the private sector that does not involve the public, it is easier to run. And that is where our focus is. That is where the market is very, uh, it's not well developed. So you, you see to cook for federal government, but you don't see to cook for private sector. Uh, before the end of the year, we're coming up with, with our own to cook for the private sector in such a way that people can actually raise to cook, which is a form of debt and use it to finance their project and then pay in line with non-interest banking regime. Uh, those are the kind of things that Dr. Bashir and his team are working on. Uh, there's one person that is also, that he didn't introduce, Dr. Usman. Uh, so we have a lot of doctors that have gone to understand this thing as, uh, in a lot of places, and they are putting it in place oh, right now. MashaAllah, beautiful team. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Sister Ramatullah Babalala, please unmute and ask your question, please. Uh, ma. Please unmute and ask your question. Is that Sister Ramatullah still there? Okay, Sister Bola Aziz, I don't know if it's a mister or a sister. Uh, Bola Aziz, please unmute and ask your question. I'm sorry, 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 i am um, my question is that, um, is it permissible for the CEO of a corporate organization to use inflow of the company to secure loan to buy a personal house? Um, I mean, I don't know if that is a Sharia question, but um, the, the company inflow, the company, um, you know, assets is for the company. You know, it's, it's always, I mean, the appropriate thing is to use, for the CEO to use, use our own personal inflow to buy whatever assets allow, allow. okay mashallah uh, thank okay you. so let, let me let me look at the other dimension to that question i don't i don't know what you wanted to pick out of it is it if the ceo is taking a staff loan a ceo is the staff of the company if the company policy and the CEO is funding that will be used will be the funds that are coming. But then compensation returns and everything must be at arm's length in such a way that it complies with the way any other individual would have paid and borrowed. And Islamic uh, 
non-interest uh, transactions are also guided by accounting principles. So the, the auditors, the tax authorities, will look at the arm's length billing, and if it is not done at arm's length, it will be corrected for tax purposes. Okay. Okay, I guess that's okay. So just like taking the facility from your institution, which is common. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, says, um, okay, so Mr. Latif Sonny, please unmute and ask your question. Mr. Latif Sonny, you have the floor, sir. Now I got an example of here. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rashi. Uh, for this insightful session. Uh, I have just two questions. Uh, first, um, you, I, I know you mentioned um, that there are some investments that have fixed returns. Uh, I would just like to ask, um, pertaining to real estate, are there real estate investments that have fixed returns such that um, a prospective investor would know how much or at least a percentage you will get in a fixed amount of time, maybe six months, like 20 days, like you said, or a year, or such. That's my first question. Second question is, and also this, I think this also extends to um, our father, Abu Jima, as well. I, I would like to know if outside this platform, I understand that this is a what this is a session, and um, it might not be easy for all participants to soak in all that has been dished out here. So as, as time goes on, we might have um, some investment questions to ask, especially because most of us are young and looking for a way to grow our wealth in a lot way. Are there opportunities or windows for us to uh, conserve, so to say, uh, in quotes, with um, you and Dr. Bashir and other financial advisors that we have here, such that we are guided in our investment options? Thank you so much. Okay, thanks. Maybe I'll take the first question. So, with regards to um, that fixed income, you know, there can be expected income, like I mentioned earlier on, and um, Sharia allows that we have a minimum, um, a minimum expected profit. You know, even under the Darabha Musharaka contract, it's okay, benchmark minimum, I'm going to give you so much, you know, they can be more than that. The Sharia allows that. Um, so under the expected profit arrangement, there could be minimum. Thanks. So I think the second question is for Mr. Jimo. Okay, so uh, taken from where Dr. Bashir left, uh, investment can be for income, it can be for growth. So we have two type of product, real estate. If you have essays that have been completed and you have people that are renting the place, you can actually create fixed income based on the rent that you are collecting because you know the rent that is coming in. And you can then say, I'm collecting 100,000. We, we're going to share it 80, 20. You understand? So your 80 is fixed. It's not interest rate as in, in, in that proportion, but you know the fixed income that you are getting. So that way you can have it. The other part is where you have the growth. It's, a, it's a off plan. You don't know the kind of revenue you are going to get. You can create part of it as fixed. You can create part of it as variable, depending on what you get at the end of the day. In terms of uh, uh, getting investment knowledge, Dr. Bashir is our boss in this area. Is the one that has PhD in uh, all this. Me, I'm just a supporter. So I think Dr. Bashir will give his uh, information. And I said also we have Dr. Usman, who is also very knowledgeable in this area. So the two of them will give their contact. Uh, and then and then we have programs in our office from time to time for this group, uh, for this Muslim group. So people have, you can interact. And sister, the coordinating sister is also also have a contact that uh, we can we can share from. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very, thank you very much, sir. Um, Brother Abdul Afiz Omol Omolikho, please ask your question, Mr. Abdul Afiz. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Dr. Bashir, assalamu alaikum once again. Wa alaikum salam. I think last year I contacted you on a property. Yes, sir. And, uh, but Abu uh, Jamil have cleared you, in which you told me that uh, you don't do stand alone. That was last year. Yes, but sir. you never told me. Yeah, you said? 
Okay, no, I was not in church bank then. I was in yes, another yes, yes, okay. But you never told me uh, uh, such a company like this exist. Yes, and uh, the way I'm looking at it, it has it has been in an existence for a while. If uh, Stan, uh, Stanley cannot provide what I want, and as a Muslim brother, uh, expressing myself to you, even chat, I mean on WhatsApp and calls, you should have introduced me to something. Brother like Abdullah Fis, brother Abdullah Nam. Fis. Nam. So, brother uh, Doctor Bashir was with Stanley. Bank. Uh, it is okay, what I want now is that how can oh, we let me finish? Let me finish. Maybe the contacts you said you share. Then let me finish. Let me finish. Okay, you want okay. No, let me finish. Hello? Let me finish. So it okay, was okay. it's unethical for him to start making references, and as Muslim, we shouldn't be doing that. Now is here. We are okay. just putting this one into place. This is, as he said at the beginning, is a co-founder. That means we're just okay. starting it. Trust Bank okay. Group has been in existence for some time, but we've yeah. not been doing non-interest finance. We're just okay. starting non-interest finance now. We have a lot of okay. other members of the group. We have yeah. asset management, conventional. We have microfinance okay. bank, conventional. We have okay. uh, securities brokerage. We're just setting up Trust Bank Athol, which is the non-interest arm of our institution. Okay, thank so, you for that. Thank you for that. Thank Dr. Bashir handled the situation appropriately. Okay. And now we are, we can move forward. Okay. Then if that's the case, those contacts that you promised will be shared me... with the with the notes. You will you will get it, sir. Every, you will get it. Uh, we will get it. You will get it via email or on the okay. MMC Thank group. You. Thank, Thank you very much. much Thank you very much. Okay, so Thank before you. I ask the next person uh, question, please, someone is asking: Does Trust Bank author acquire assets for their portfolio uh, management? And if you if yes, how can we go about pitching to the company? What I'll say there is that let's take this offline, please. Um, I, I mean, I'll share my contacts. Let's look at the exact assets and we'll show that it's fully compliant and all of that. I can take it from there. Thanks. Okay, this is another question that will probably be answered offline, but this person is asking that I'm into, quest I'm into gemstones and coral beads. Uh, can I get an investment or Islamic loan through your bank? Um, so, so again, um, I mean, you can share initial, I mean, we do, you know, we're going to be doing a lot of trading, community trading and all of that, but let's look at your proposition and then again, analyze it and see, again, just want to measure the risk to see that um, we're not overexposed, you know, and then we could explore it. So let's look at the business case. I think my, 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 my details, I've got my contact here too, um, I think. If it's not there, it will be added so that um, you can contact us. I've got my, that of my colleagues here. Okay, so Mr. Ibrahim Tunde Ajani, uh, you have the floor. Please uh, ask your question. Yeah, I would like to, from the um, pyramid on the slide, I discovered that um, majority of, of, from the classification, we can see that the lower um, um, class have the bunch of uh, uh, the investment of which we are looking at in terms of uh, housing financing. Um, and also I understand that um, um, it could be difficult for, for these kind of people to have um, the required funds. Are we looking at crowdfunding for all these people to bring in maybe small amount of money so that they can contribute into the investment plan? And also, um, what uh, plans do we have for these people to also ensure that they also are only else in the future. Okay, thank you very much. So um, if, if you look at the slide, we talked about the kind of funding that we're gonna be needing for them. Um, for the, lo the lower middle class, um, talk about target savings, we can do rent to own. So we have a plan for them. And if possible, we can you know, somehow get some kind of um, housing microfinance you know, um, fund, something that we can explore. Uh, we're gonna start exploring. So I'm aware that, um, um, so international organizations have such funds. Um, for intervention funds for the lower class, and again, what has happened in some other countries is that um, we've actually gone all out to mobilize certain kind of charity funds for um, the low income class, for social housing, if you like. 
Um, and again, we're gonna be exploring all of that to see. We're partnering with a couple of um, crowdfunding outfits um, to mobilize very cheap liability or savings, you know, deposits, you know, to be able to put into this also. So we're exploring all of this at the same time, but we believe that um, in a very little while, a lot of these plans will start to unfold and start to see the impact. I hope I answered your question well enough, but yes, we're exploring these opportunities. Doctor, you have five minutes. Okay, so I think um, I'll just take maybe one or two more questions and then we can round up. Okay, any more questions from the other end? Or do we round up formally? I'm raising up my hand. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Uh, salam. Please, what's your name? Damilullah Karim. Okay, please go ahead. Okay, salam alaikum. So I was running through the um, poll and I saw a question that I was talking about um, how shares in Dangote Cement, MTN, and Nestle are shared mm -hmm. like that. So I don't know if you could share me some perspective. Does that mean that every, all the companies that are listed on the Nigeria Stock Exchange market and are not producing um, a product of our own, our whole share of clients, or is it something that's like specific to the stock that like, like you list on, this, um, on, the, on the poll? So thank you very much. So, I mean, the, the two levels, two primary levels of screening that we have, you know, there's industry screening, and there's financial screening, right? So the industry wants to take away tobacco, alcohol, and the likes, you know? Um, so at the end of the day, you're gonna have some companies that don't do any of these things, but you also take away conventional financial institutions, including insurance. The second level, you have companies that, okay, they look fine, then go to cement and coal, you then look at their financial screening to say, have they invested, how much of their total income is in interest bearing, investments, is in bonds, and all of that. You know, if it's not more than a particular percentage, we can allow them pass, you know? How much debts, how much loan, conventional loans they have in conventional banks? You know, if it's more than a particular benchmark, then they're not sure I compliant anymore. It's on the basis of this that um, we have the, um, um, we have the Lotus Index, right? To say, okay, these are the assets that are compliant. After looking at the, um, um, you know, company screening and of course um, the financial screen and all of that. You know, so they could be, you know, based on that index, but all companies that, are, that have passed the first stage, it doesn't mean that they can pass the second stage easily, considering the fact that most companies have regular loans to banks. So when you have a lot of loans, you know, you may not just be compliant. You should so be able to buy shares in those entities. I'm not sure. We have just two minutes. I'm not sure we can take any questions. Do you want to take a question, sir? Okay, Mr. Yeah. Okay. yeah, my you question. Can, you Hello. can lock, lock the two hands that are up, and then we take those two questions. Okay. So we don't take okay. anyone after so, those two uh, questions that are locked. So, Salam Are you the one speaking what? now? No, Hassan Udin. Hassan Udin. Okay. Uh, my name is Hassan. Um, I'd like to ask a question concerning um, uh, for young professionals. So I see something, for example, I don't know whether anybody knows about Money Africa. So they give a lot of um, financial advices to people, but they are not um, kind of halal. Some of them are not halal. Um, how do I put it? Some of them are not halal compliant. Is there a way we can actually have something similar to this for young people? to help us grow our wealth in a halal way. That okay, let's, ex let, let's explore. We'll explore very quickly, check out what they're doing, see what we need to do to make it fully compliant and how we can bring in young people. But of course, we can explore that um, as much as possible. We will explore it. Yeah, Dr. Bashi, let me ask you that. Yes, please. Yes, you, you, you remember we are working on something like that where we have a trust bank uh, investment club yeah, so when when we finalize modalities on that on how that will work, we'll get back to you. Okay. But we are working on something like that where we have a hub where people can come in, ask questions about about investment, how they can grow their wealth, wealth over time. So yes. we'll, we'll come we'll come we'll come back to that. And by the way, we know Money Africa. We are dealing with them uh, from uh, we want, via one of our subsidiaries in Trust Bank Financial Group. So. You know how that works, and we are working on something like that. Thank you. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Aziz. I know we had discussed. Aziz Lawal, Aziz Lawal, that just spoke is the is our group 
uh, chief financial officer in a trust bank group. Although it's not showing his name, he's coming in as a mineral <laughs> something. <laughs> so Thank we can also have his contact to the people that could be given, yes. Okay. Okay, I believe that's the last one, Mr. Nurdin. I'm not sure if that was the Mr. Nurdin. Mr. Nurdin, I'll add those to your hands. Yeah. It's still up. And yeah. our time has run out. Let's um, take let's take Yekin, uh, the two people that are here. We have Yekin and uh, as 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 Let's take the two of them, please. Please, who's uh, speaking? Okay. My name is Nuruddin Oladosu. Yeah, I'm, I mean, okay. I'm, actually, I mean, I'm, I'm actually excited by this event. I mean, and it's, I mean, it's, it's actually an eye opening. But there, uh, there's one area I'm, I'm actually interested about is about the rate. I mean, rate, the real estate uh, in, investment trust. My own concern on that one now is that when do we plan to have it uh, li listed on, 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 on the exchange so that it will be easy for anybody to just buy and sell? Then, I mean, that will also improve the, the liquidity of that, of that instrument. So I, I don't know if, I mean, if there's any plan to have it in the market in the next one or two years, or could even be shorter. So I, I mean, I, 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 I just feel that maybe I should ask a doctor on it. Okay, thank you very much. I'd love Mr. Juma to take that. But on my own side, um, we, 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 it's something we're gonna, we're gonna explore. We're starting with some kind of real estate bag note at this time, and then very quickly we'll move to uh, Suku. Um, if it's a listed to cook, for example, yes, it's be on the market and you can easily trade it. Uh, but again, in the next couple of months, we'll start to explore all of these opportunities very quickly. Okay, very I think I, I agree with the uh, doctor completely. So we can take the last question. Okay, if the question is... Hey, Mr. Right. Zubair. Mr. Zubair. Mr. Okay. Zubair, you are the last speaker. Okay, so uh, in the absence of that, uh, Dr. Shodi, do you want to close this with well, a few let words? Me, let, me, let me give Mr. Jimo that opportunity. Um, I think I've spoken at length already. Uh, so Mr. Jimo, do you want to give us a closing remark, please? Okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dr. Bashir. Uh, I think it's been a very wonderful session. Uh, you have explained this and taught all of us what uh, more than what we knew when we started. So well done. Uh, for all the participants, we thank you for joining us. We appreciate your time. And uh, we hope that next time we call you, you will honor us with your presence. Thank you so much. Thank you, madam. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. thank you very much, everyone. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Okay, uh, uh, and that brings us to the end of this masterclass. Jazakumullah Hiran to Dr. Shodi for his time and uh, Mr. Jimo, uh, Mr. Aziz and everybody from your team. Uh, thank you so much. God bless you and bless what you're doing and make it a success. For everyone that's joined, that registered and joined, thank you for your time. I believe that we have taken one or two things that will definitely help us grow our wealth moving forward. If you have any question, the website for the Trust Bank organization is in the chat. Please write it down now. However, we're going to be sharing all of that information through the MMC platform and email, uh, inshallah. So look out for that. So that's it. Uh, Aziz Law, do you have anything to add? Okay, is that it still there? <laughs> okay, so uh, on that note, I believe that we can say our final test slim and close it. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, bye bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you for your time, sir. I saw my complete love back at you, everyone. There's some people asking about MMC. Uh,
well, check us on YouTube and LinkedIn for information to join or be a part of us. Uh, that's it. Our time has run out. Uh, Mr. Shuai. Okay, thank you very much, everyone. Bismillah, Bismillah, <laughs>